So knitting and yarn related. So if you don't know me already, my name is Kristen Janik. I'm a semi-retired knitting pattern designer, a knitting instructor, and an all-around knitting enthusiast. Uh, I am podcasting to you from my home in the DC, in the Maryland suburbs of Washington, DC, where I live with my husband and two little boys, JJ, who is eight, and Ollie, who is now seven. When I'm not knitting, you can find me doing yoga, vegetable gardening, watching Orioles baseball, drinking wine, but it is mostly about the knitting, so let's go ahead and start talking about it. On and off the needles, I actually have something off the needles. So I finished my test knit for Taylor Owen of the Opulent Plunge Bra. So this, as you can see, is a bralette pattern um, that is worked in DK weight yarn with lots of really cute cables uh, at the top of the cups and then along the band. And these particular cables here that are along the band uh, are really helping to give your bralette some structure. So those are decorative as well as functional. Uh, this pattern has been released. Uh, as I said, it is for a DK weight yarn. This used about 150 yards, more or less. So I did use the yarn that was called for in the pattern, which is uh, Magpie Fibers Swanky DK, which is a merino cashmere nylon. Um, this colorway that I used is called Voices Carry. Um, and I didn't make really any modifications here, except that I crisscrossed the bands, the, the straps in the back, Hard to see. So they crisscross like that, um, which I mean, I don't even think the pattern says, it just says attach them. So I guess that's not technically a modification. Um, but when I attached them, instead of seaming, which I just, um, these kind of little seams, I just don't seem to be very good at. I find they always end up loosening up. So what I did was instead to this is a five stitch I cord for the straps. So I picked up five stitches along this, um, this edge here, kind of from the, it's sort of like a, an I cord kind of trim. And from kind of the inside, I picked up five stitches. So a little bit on the wrong side, I knit one row and then I used a three needle bind off to attach the straps. Um, and so it is nice and sturdy. And since I kind of picked it up sort of along the inside of that edge, you can see that this kind of line of neat bound off stitches stays nice and neat and doesn't get wonky because um, it kind of curls in a little bit here. And so that's where I picked up the stitches. And it looks like that's coming from um, kind of the inside. So it just looks neat and tidy. So uh, I am very happy with this project. I knit the size two. I don't remember how many sizes there are. Let me look actually, the pattern is right here. <laughs> I knit the size two and there are seven sizes. Um, this actually is the test knit copy of the pattern, so she may have ultimately decided to change that, but there, there are seven. Um, something I know she did is that she um, created larger cup sizes. It was originally just kind of one cup size because it is pretty stretchy because it's, it's, a, it's a bit of a ribbing. But she did create larger cup sizes. Um, she also created a modification to create a little... Like right now, it's just kind of a plunge, but she created a modification to make a keyhole here. So Taylor is hosting a knit along for this right now, I think through the end of August, maybe 
maybe the 29th or the, you know, maybe it's not the exact end of August, but most of the month. Um, and I'm actually planning to knit another one. I want to um, do another one with a longer band. So you can see it's a pretty shallow band and I want to do a little bit of a longer one um, to provide a little bit more coverage. And also because I, um, the bottom of my rib cage kind of sticks out a little bit, it looks a little pointy. And so this would kind of cover that up. And then I want to try that, uh, that keyhole modification that she has, which I think will be cute. So um, definitely she has a YouTube uh, channel. It's called Thread to Mend. Definitely check her out over there. You can uh, grab the pattern on Ravelry. I'm just I'm holding it upside down because when you hold it, when you hold it, you know, this way, it doesn't look as nice. <laughs> um, you can grab the pattern on a Ravelry. Um, definitely check out that knit along. This is just a really cute little accessory um, that is also gonna, you know, when the cool weather comes, give you an extra layer of warmth under your clothes. I really enjoyed this project and it was a really fast knit too. So I did finish that. Um, and then I'll just show you, I happen to have another skein of the Swanky DK. So I'm just gonna make this kind of dark uh, brownish gray or grayish brown. I wanna say kind of a brown toned gray. It has a little bit of subtle, subtle tonal colors in here, but it is definitely kind of a medium gray. Um, I don't remember what it's called. It, it wood smoke maybe, or I'll, I'll try to include it in the show notes, um, which I will actually do this time uh, for this episode because I'm not on vacation anymore. Um, I am planning to knit another one. Not sure if it's gonna get done during the knit along because I just have a lot of stuff on the needles right now, but I definitely want to make another one of those. So Opulent Plunge is a fun, a fun make and a really cute accessory. So that is really the only thing I have finished. <laughs> so one other quick project that I have been working on, um, I took to the beach because I just felt like I needed kind of an instant gratification project. Um, and I'm already half done. <laughs> this looks kind of weird. Uh, this is the Simple House Slippers pattern from Temple of Knit that I am working in Fiber for the People. This is one of her club colorways from last year, I believe. So you can see I have already finished one. This is a DK weight slipper and this is uh, her BFL base. So this is nice, uh, cozy. Let's see if I can actually show you on my foot what it looks like. Might need some flexibility here. All right, so <laughs> uh, you can see that it is just a kind of cute little footy pattern. The way that it has worked is that you um, knit the garter stitch portion flat and then you join it around for this part. Um, I seamed it on the wrong side and I don't know if it's going to bother me enough to actually rip it out and do it again because I hate seaming. Um, you know, these are just kind of around the house slippers. Does it really matter? I don't know. <laughs> um, I haven't decided yet. But that's the first one done and I knit most of this in the car on the way back from the beach. Uh, and I have started the second one, but I'm supposed to be slipping the stitches on the edge and I forgot. Now, I don't know if it's really going to make that much of a difference. I mean, this is with the slip stitch edge here. Again, is this really worth ripping out to start over for, for a pair of kind of around the house little slippers? I don't think so. I think I'm just going to keep going. Um, this is a, it's a, really simple pattern. This time I remembered to leave a really long tail to seam up uh, the back of the heel. Something I thought about doing but ultimately decided not to because it's really fiddly. I was thinking about using a provisional cast on here which would give me live stitches that then I could um, kitchener or three needle bind off together. That's really how much I don't like seeming <laughs> um, but I didn't. <laughs> I did not do that. Uh, provisional cast ons are, they're just fiddly and they get on my nerves. That's all. There's nothing, there's nothing wrong with them. They work really well for their purpose. 
I'm just was kind of being lazy, like I said, because I wanted this to be sort of a quick instant gratification project. Um, and I just didn't feel like messing with it. But already back on the needles. And this was, like I said, I mean, it is a six hour, maybe seven with, with traffic and uh, stopping for lunch, six hour drive, seven hour drive back from the beach. Um, and I did, I had already done the garter stitch most of it and so most of this was done in the car um, and I was knitting on other things and I was you know kind of just resting for some of that time so it is a really quick project love the yarn really like how the the colorway is working up um, but definitely it's really variegated so there's not a whole lot else I would want to do with something this variegated other than kind of these cute slipper socks so that is another project in progress. I did cast on the front for my Ridgeview tee. I had been waffling about that because I really need another skein of yarn, but I don't want to buy another skein of yarn. Um, and I haven't really decided how maybe I could modify it to only use the skeins I have. Um, but I figure I may as well just get started um, and, and deal with that problem when we come to it. Maybe I'll just go ahead and buy another skein of yarn. I don't know. We'll see. Um, so, um, I did kind of cast that on and that was really about it. I did not do much more than, than just cast on. Um, the other thing I've been working on is my Deshane pullover in linen and you can uh, see more about that in my latest finish fix or frog vlog, which I will include a link to here. Uh, so you can check that out where I'm showing uh, the progress I've made on that. That is part of my journey to finish Fix or Frog all of my existing whips in 2021. And I am uh, making good progress and expect to have that done by the next episode. Um, and then the other thing that I have been working on is another test knit. And this time uh, for Carrie Bloomer, Carrie Knits, the... Um, the designer of the Ridge Beauty, and I am working on a test knit for her for her synthesis uh, tank top. I showed you guys last time that I, you know, I had the yarn and I hadn't really done much. So since then, I have cast on. Love this cast on. It was it's an I-cord cast on. It was a pain. It's not much a pain. It's just really slow, but it looks amazing. Gives this really nice i-cord edge uh, and it kind of naturally creates this what kind of looks like yarn overs this very open lacy almost bit at the bottom um so i am knitting this top with a line shaping which means i cast on a lot a lot of stitches um and hopefully i will be i think i got another inch to go before i can start working decreases um so it is very large. Um, it does not even all neatly fit on this needle right now. Uh, I am knitting the size 34. Um, you want some negative ease usually with uh, the style of tank top, um, particularly because as you can see, it is mostly garter stitch um, and that stretches so much. So for this style of, of top, you really want to have that negative ease. Um, so Right here is the center front, and this is all worked in one piece, um, which ultimately will fold around and join here in the back. And as I think you sh I showed you guys last time, um, you can see it has a really neat, tidy edge here because you can, you can see the whole thing if you want, or you can leave the back a little bit open and you just seam as, as much as you want of the back. So I'm definitely gonna leave at least a little bit. Um, I haven't decided 100% how much uh, I'm going to leave open at the back, but definitely some. Um, and then that front sort of lace panel is mirrored on the back. So this is really cute. Um, it is a little slow going. I'm using its fingering weight yarn and a US 4. I believe the pattern calls for a US 3. So to get gauge, I did go up a needle size. Um, but still fingering weight on a US-4 is a not super fast. Um, and 
to be honest, most of the time I've spent on it so far was probably just the casting on. So it is moving a little bit more swiftly now, but I have been working on some other projects as well. So I know she's going to be releasing this in a few weeks, and uh, I certainly hope I will have much more progress by that time. Uh, the yarn I am using is this uh, yarn that I showed you guys last time that is a collaboration between La Bien et Me and Rosa Pomad. So this is a 100% wool. The colorway is called Quail. So as you can see, it's kind of this, this pale purple gray with, with these brown speckles. And since it's more, mostly garter stitch, that little bit of speckling is not really interfering with the patterning at all, which is nice. So that is, I think, the only other project I am actively working on right now, except for the one I'm going to show you in the next segment. Okay, adelante. This is where I'm talking about upcoming patterns. Um, and it's a less common segment now that I am semi-retired from pattern design, or at least trying to be. But I am working on a new pattern. Um, and this is a sweater pattern that I'm going to be releasing in the fall. Uh, and I am using Hudson and West Forge in this color called Gold Leaf, which you can see is very aptly named. Uh, this is a nice, it's not um, quite as smooth as Merino, but it's not really rustic. It's just a nice, hardy, toothsome kind of yarn. So it is uh, a Merino Corydale blend, which is why it's not that super, super smooth um, Merino, but it is still nice and soft. And that Corydale is giving it a little bit of texture and um, what's the word I'm looking for? Just that kind of, I don't know, substance when you're working with it. Um, the yarn is lovely. I have been very happy with it. The pattern is giving me some challenges. So I started this, did I actually start it before? I, right before vacation or while I was on vacation, I think right before, and, and knit the cuff. And this is going to be a kind of dolman sleeve side to side. So this is going to go here, you know, and then it's going to widen up to the shoulder. Then you're going to split and work the front and back separately and then join again to do the opposite sleeve. Um, so the first time I started it, um, I probably got a couple of inches in on the sleeve before I realized I didn't like how I had set up the increases and more importantly that I had not switched needle sizes. So cuff is done in a US 7, the body is done in a US 8. So I had to rip that out. Fortunately, I could keep the cuff, um, which is not a big deal, but uh, I did do a really nice tidy tubular cast on that I did not want to have to, to do again. Um, and also, you know, ribbing's boring. Nobody wants to do that again. Um, so I ripped that bit out, um, I think while I was in the car knitting on the way home from vacation. And I started again and I got pretty far. I had used up, you can see the, this part here was what I hadn't used from the skein. All the rest of this that has been rewound by hand, I had used all of that. And then it just, um, it was starting to get to what would have been the end of the sleeve and it just didn't look big enough. Uh, and that is when I realized that I had done my calculations for a sleeve that was um, as long as, as from kind of the, the waist to the armhole, but had forgotten to include the actual armhole measurement. So, um, in order to do that, I really need to be increasing every other row, every other round. Uh, and I was only increasing every four or five rounds. So there was really no way to fix that. I just didn't, the math was not on my side. So I had to rip it all the way back to the cuff and start again. <laughs> so hopefully third time is a charm. It's uh, going well. I think my math is correct this time. Uh, and you can see I am working this nice, 
cable that is going to run up the arm and then it's going to run across the top of the front and I suppose the top of the back as well. I guess it depends on how long it is taking me to get this done. Um, whether I want to go ahead and, and add the extra work of a cable on the back as well. Probably I will. Um, so I am really happy with the concept for this pattern. I really like this, this cute, you know, it's nothing super fancy, um, but it's a nice thick, sturdy cable. Uh, I like the way the increases are, are looking here. Um, and so this is going to be not quite, not really three quarter length, but not full length. So I guess bracelet length. And so you can kind of see how this is an odd angle. So you can see how this is going to go up the front of your arm. And then again, this is going to be kind of a dolman sleeve. So this is going to hang down like this. And um, you're increasing you know, at the underarm and then on either side of this cable panel. So you're getting a little bit more kind of length below the top of the arm, which is what we want. So that's not going as swiftly as I had hoped, but it's going. Um, I haven't quite memorized the cable pattern yet. It is a 50 row repeat, but as you can see, it's, it's basically like this part and then it flips opposite. So I really would only have to memorize like half of it and it's nothing too complicated, but uh, you know, it's easier to just kind of sit there with, with the chart at this point than try to force myself to memorize it. So this is gonna be a really nice cozy pullover for the fall. Uh, this pattern is going to be the prize for everyone who finishes a sweater project during the sweater along, which is happening right now and runs through October 15th. Everyone who completes a project actually during that sweater long is going to win a, a free copy of this pattern, which means I got to get moving <laughs> um, so that the pattern is actually ready to go when the sweater along ends. I know it seems really far away, but it's less than two months and I've got to, you know, sample, get a tech edited, um, do the pattern layout. Well, I'll actually write the pattern because right now I just have a spreadsheet full of math <laughs> and then get that tech edited, pattern layout, photography, um, test knitting, hopefully. <laughs> so I've, yeah, I've got my work cut out for me, but that is underway and that is going to be a new pattern from me um, before the end of the year. Um, other than that, I recently reached out to an indie dyer that I have chatted with about kind of non, non yarn stuff on, on Twitter, um, and got in touch with her about collaborating on a project for 2022, early 2022. Uh, and she said, yes. So that's going to be coming up. This is a pattern that I designed for, um, another indie dyer about six years ago for a collection that she just never released and no longer plans to release. Um, and recently, you know, gave me the go ahead to just go ahead and pat publish the pattern independently. Um, I definitely need a new sample and I also need to make some tweaks to the pattern. So for starters, the pattern only had six sizes. Um, so I'm definitely gonna want some more sizes. Uh, and the shaping on the pattern is not sort of current. It's, um, I mean, as, as far as there are trends in knitting, uh, trending right now sort of toward a little bit more boxy, a little bit more cropped sweater bodies. And this is a little bit uh, longer and kind of hourglassy. Um, and so I wanna make some adjustments to that. It also originally had regular set-in sleeves that you would sew in, and I'm definitely going to rework them to be the seamless set-in sleeves, which um, I find so much easier to do. Not just because I hate seaming uh, in general, but because kind of easing sleeves into armholes uh, can be really tricky. Um, and you don't have to worry about that with the seamless set-in sleeve technique. So, um, I'm going to be starting work on that. As I said, it's going to be early 2022, so I am not uh, in a super rush 
Um, I will certainly get this other sweater done first before I cast on that one, but that is in the pipeline. Um, and then in the next segment, I'm going to show you the yarn that I got to go ahead and make a cardigan version of the Soundside Pullover. So I've been toying with this idea for a while. I really started out by looking for kind of just kind of floaty, airy cardigan to, especially for the summer, to just be able to kind of toss on um, when things are like really over air conditioned or, you know, in the grocery store, in the freezer aisle, um, which is something really light. Um, and I really couldn't find what I was looking for. And then it occurred to me that the original sound side pullover uh, is worked in a fingering weight yarn, and that would be a good candidate to perhaps turn into a cardigan um, with pockets, because obviously we need pockets. Um, so um, if you're not familiar with that pattern, you can check it out on Ravelry or on Payhip, but it is a an all over textured pullover um, that is alternately worked holding a fingering weight yarn with a lace weight mohair and then the trim is worked without the, the mohair which gives it just a little bit of contrast um, and a contrast in color and texture um, so i think it's going to be a good, a good choice for that and um i'm kind of thinking spring but i mean maybe having it having it ready to go and like February or March so that it's a, a just in time for spring kind of thing but I did already buy the yarn and I'm going to show you that in the next segment. All right I have done a little yarn shopping um which it's been a while since I've done much yarn shopping so I don't feel too bad. Uh, the first one was a while back uh, Magpie Fibers had a pre-order for her new base, which is called Equinox Sport, and it is a um, silk and linen. And I went ahead and ordered some. It's very slippery. It's sliding out of the skein as I as I speak. Um, so I went ahead and put a pre-order in, and then that arrived uh, while I was on vacation. So it's getting a little blown out. This colorway is called Bougie Beaver, and it is kind of a, a pinky brown brownie pink, I guess. Um, and it is absolutely beautiful in this um, linen silk. And I am definitely going to do a kind of summery tank top with this. I don't know which one yet. And given that it is already uh, mid-August, that's probably not going to happen until next summer, uh, maybe this spring. It's not a super high priority. I've actually found a number of really cute uh, patterns um, that are good candidates and I, I really can't decide. So um, good thing it's not a rush because I'm being very indecisive. But I do love this color. That's a little better, a little less blown out. Just this really pale pink, brown, warm. Um, not my usual color because I'm not 100% sure it's great with my skin, but at least when I'm tan. <laughs> um, you think I would be tanner because I was at the beach for a week, but it actually rained most of the time. So I'm not as tan as, uh, as I might normally be after a week at the beach, unfortunately. Um, so I did get two skeins of this and it is going to become some floaty, airy summer top at some point. Um, but again, probably not until next summer because I've got way too much already on the needles to start anything new right now. Um, and I, you know, it, like I said, it's already mid August. So even if I did start something new, it wouldn't be done in really in time to, to wear. Hopefully I can stick with that, um, commitment not to start a new project. <laughs> we'll see. So I did get that. And then the other yarn is, uh, as I said, the yarn that I bought to go ahead and make the sound side part again. Um, I actually picked this yarn out months ago and I didn't order it because I'm supposed to be retired and I wasn't sure if I was going to go for it with Soundside Cardigan, but ultimately I decided I was. So uh, I got both of these yarns are from Amano Yarns, which is um, a Peru-based yarn company. 
And uh, this is the fingering weight yarn. The uh, line is Plocheski and it is a um, wool cotton linen blend. So as I said, I want this to be a lighter cardigan. Um, I definitely didn't want it to be all cotton or linen. That's just a, I'm not a huge fan of working with those yarns. They're not great on my hands. Um, and they just, they just don't feel as nice to wear. So I, I didn't want a 100% wool, but I also didn't want 100% cotton. So this was a really good choice. Um, just this really pretty purple. This colorway, I can't remember because I do have two yarns. One of them, it just has the number on here. One of them, and I think it is this one, is called Thistle, which is the name of our dog. Um, so that's the fingering weight yarn for the project. And then, um, as I said, it is alternating between working with just the fingering weight and the um, lace weight, uh, lace weight mohair, the original. This one is 37% um, baby Surrey alpaca, 37% mohair, and then 26% silk. Um, I'm really interested to try this blend. Um, I personally find the just the mohair silk just a little bit. It's not scratchy. It's that it's it's kind of prickly because the mohair is a little bit stiff. Um, so this has a, a mix between the alpaca and the mohair, which I'm hoping is going to make it just a little bit softer. Again, this is the same company, Amano Yarns, and this base is called Uma. Uh, I believe all of these names are Quechua. My One of my biggest goals in life is to learn to speak Quechua, even though it's completely useless for me living here in the United States. Okay, let's see. It usually tells you what the translation of it is, but it actually doesn't. I think it says so on their website. Um, so, oh well, no Quechua lessons for you today. You can go to their website and find out what, what these words mean in Quechua. So I think they're gonna be a nice combination. Um, the the mm, alpaca mohair is going to lighten this up. And then when I just use this for like the collar and cuffs, it's going to give a really nice color contrast and a texture contrast. So uh, I really like this combination. I'm excited to work with these yarns. I've worked with um, some Amano bases before and have been really happy with them. Uh, and it's just a company that I really want to support. And I also would love to work on translating some of their content for the English language uh, market. So maybe that's something that will happen someday. If somebody from Amano Yarns is watching, I'm a translator, get in touch with me. I know all of the knitting lingo. My catch was not great, but my Spanish is, is excellent. So that is the yarn for the Soundside Cardigan, which hopefully will be coming to life in 2022, I think. That is all the new yarn I have for you in this episode. All right, and we do have a sewing segment again in this episode. So if that's not something you're interested in, you can just move along, but hopefully you are a little bit. Uh, so I'm excited to share that I finished the project I was showing you last time. This is the a gnat just screwed by my face, that was annoying. This is the Uniform Tunic. This is a pattern by Greenline Studio. Uh, the yarn is from Robert Kaufman Fabrics. It is a yarn. The fabric is from Robert Kaufman Fabrics. It is a yarn dyed linen. I don't know what that means, but what I think it means is that the, um, individual threads are dyed first and then are woven together to create this. Um, and that is based only, uh, I have very limited knowledge of weaving, but this fabric has been pretty unravely and the, the threads that are coming out are mostly, are yellow, mostly. And so it seems like 
one's the warp, one's the weft. I don't know which is which, but it seems like one is yellow and the other one is green, which is what's creating this um, really beautiful um, color. So I did finish this. Um, it has its fair share of mistakes. I can show you some of them. I know that's, you know, who doesn't love to see other people's mistakes? Um, so, and here's some of my hair. Yeah, so you can see that with the threads that are coming out, they're all yellow. Um, so this heading, I mean, this is only my second ever real project other than a, a mask. Um, so one of the new techniques was uh, bias armhole facings, which are, you cut some of the fabric on the bias, which um, knitters will probably know means diagonally, um, and then kind of fold it over to create the facing and sew it in. And I um, <laughs> had some, some issues where mostly because the, the fabric was un unraveling quite a bit um, and also my stitching is not very straight so the under stitching that I did didn't quite catch all of the edges. This looks nice. Here's what it's supposed to look like. You can see that it's um, my under stitching is right next to that edge and that's what's supposed to happen. Um, but then you can see here in the spots where the fabric is coming out my stitching isn't as close as it should have been. Um, so uh, that's that. No one's really gonna see that. Um, I do have a pucker on the neckline here. I did this twice and the first time I had several puckers, so I guess that's an improvement. Um, if you recall in the previous episode, I had to recut the pieces because I screwed up cutting them the first time. Um, so I think there may have been some discrepancies. The, the neckline facing really, I struggled to, to get it in correctly. It didn't seem to be the right size. Um, and unfortunately, the point of my V is not very precise. You can see it's a little off. It's still wearable. I love these pockets and those are worked really nicely. Nice deep pockets. This is gonna be so cute. Um, I think especially like kind of when I am, hopefully the kids are back to school in the fall um, and I am kind of working from home. I can kind of have my work from home, you know, leggings and this nice shirt that are, that are well, it's a tunic, so it's a little bit longer. We'll cover my butt and uh, we'll, we'll transit. It'll be comfortable, but it'll still look nice for, you know, Zoom meetings or, or anything else that is happening and picking the kids up from school. So I did finish that. I have been quite happy with it. Um, and, you know, it's a learning process. And while there are certainly some mistakes, uh, I think it's still wearable. Um, and, you know, you have to learn somehow. You don't learn if you don't make mistakes. Um, so that is the last... Um, project I finished. I have kind of started a new project. This is the Gina Crop, which is a sewing pattern from Janet Celeste, I want to say, who is local. I think she's up in Frederick, Maryland. Um, and it is actually a reversible top. And um, I didn't have a second fabric that I wanted to use, enough of a second fabric that I wanted to use. So I did order some new fabric. Um, but in the meanwhile, I, I started the sewing for one of the fabrics. So this is, um, I really love this fabric. It's so cute. And it has little road runners on it, um, but kind of from far away, you can't really see what it is. So this is sort of a, a tank top. And the back is, let me see if I can kind of hold it the way it will be so you can see. Come on, you can cooperate. All right, so that's just kind of a regular front and the back kind of crisscrosses. Like this is not a great <laughs> demonstration. Um, 
and if the back piece kind of crisscrosses like this and it has like a little curved hem so let me just like, there we go maybe that shows a little bit okay so it's going to look like that and then, and then it's going to be reversible with a second fabric on the on the opposite side so i just sewed the two um the two side slash back pieces to the front. It was just a straight seam. It did not involve too much work. Um, and I am waiting patiently for my other fabric. Uh, and that will be hopefully uh, something I can show off in a future episode. Other than that, I have ordered bunches of um, fat corners to make masks for the kids for school. Um, they are going back to school on August 30th. There is a mask mandate here. Um, and I definitely don't wanna be washing masks every day. So I'm gonna to make tons of masks. In fact, I'm going to have a little mask making party with a friend of mine tomorrow because um, she has to make a bunch of masks for her kids as well. So I got this cute Winnie the Pooh. Uh, I got this Harry Potter. Hot Wheels, Lightning McQueen, Star Wars, and trains for my youngest. And I'm not sure if I showed you guys before. I think I did. The two Super Mario fabrics. Uh, and I also got, and I don't have here because I already cut out. Um, some Star Trek fabric from my dad who asked for a Star Trek mask. I actually found two Star Trek fabrics on Etsy, uh, which is where I got all of these. So all of the fabric that I'm purchasing for like my garment projects, I've just been buying from different fabric shops, um, Stone Mountain Fabrics and Broadway Fabrics and Gather Here. Um, but for the sort of more specialized theme fabrics that I don't need a lot of, just I just need it for masks, I've been buying um, fat quarters, on Etsy. So I was happy to find lots of a big variety of uh, kids fabrics um, and and of course Star Trek fabric for my dad who I know this morning my husband asked me where I buy the fabrics and I said oh, you know, usually Etsy why? He said I want to look for some Dungeons and Dragons fabric so basically I have to get a divorce now. Um, so those are all of the sewing projects I am working on and uh, it's going well and I am enjoying it and I hope you guys are enjoying a short sewing segment in here. Um, but either way, please leave a comment down below and let me know, you know, yes, I do like seeing some small sewing segments or no, I'd really rather you stick to the knitting stuff. Um, I did want to just do a little bit of Chatterbox uh, in this episode since I didn't do it last time. Um, we're back from vacation. We went to the Outer Banks for a week. Um, it rained a lot, which was kind of a bummer. Um, we got two, maybe two and a half good beach days. We do always rent a house that has a pool um, because, you know, with, with thunderstorms, they tend to come and go. And when we have the pool, it's a lot easier to just be like, okay, go out and play in the pool. Oh, it's raining, come back inside than having to walk uh, down to the beach. Um, with all of our assorted beach junk. Um, so it's a really cute house that we rented this year. Uh, had a little outdoor playground for the kids that they actually weren't all that interested in, um, but it was still cute to have it. Has a pool, lets us have dogs. Um, we were pretty happy with it, I think. I don't know, we're, I feel like we're always on the search for our perfect beach house. I don't know if we found it. Um, it wasn't a bad walk from the beach, but it wasn't super short either. So we'll see what happens next year. Uh, so now all of our vacationing is over and it is the middle of August and uh, school is gonna be starting in about, well, by the time you're watching this in just a little over a week. Um, I'm really nervous. As I said, we, we do have a mask mandate. The county is requiring that all teachers and, and staff either be vaccinated or do weekly testing. Um, I don't know, a week is a long time to, it's easy for something to develop in a week, but it's better than nothing. Um, I 
just feel like with the Delta variant and with so many people refusing to get vaccinated and uh, so many irresponsible governors that are actually banning mask mandates and banning you know vaccination mandates and things it just it really feels kind of like a powder keg um i need my kids to go back to school not just for me um but also because you know they they missed this whole year of socialization and um you know they both have you know my my oldest son is on the spectrum my youngest son has a genetic disorder which um among other things he has a speech impediment um, so socializing is already challenging for, for both of them. Um, and the youngest one has a, we're not really sure what it is, but when, when kids start screaming or crying, um, it really sets him off. And so he starts screaming and crying and trying to run away. Um, which had gotten better and then the pandemic came and the lockdowns came and he basically missed out on a year of learning to handle that thing that he doesn't like and learning better ways to cope with it um and you know it is something he has to learn to deal with because kids make noise i don't like screaming kids either but you can't just um start screaming and run away not you know it's not safe for starters um, and it's you know you have to learn to deal with it because you need to be in the classroom and learning um, and so he um, we really wanted him to last year was kindergarten we really wanted him to be in a regular classroom but because of that behavioral issue and because of the speech impediment they really weren't able to place him in a regular classroom they put him in what is called a learning center, which is for other kids who have similar challenges. Um, and we were hoping that, you know, after a year in learning center, maybe he would um, be learning to adapt to the classroom environment and maybe be able to move into a regular classroom. Clearly that's not happening because he was homeschooled for the whole entire year. Um, hopefully that is, um, not going to have too much of an impact on him being able to even be in the learning center classroom but we we don't know um and i'm i'm not going to be surprised when we end up you know on some kind of virtual school again in a couple of months because people have been so irresponsible um but to my knowledge neither of my kids have any immune issues so i'm it's still hard though, you know, I don't, obviously I don't want my kids to get sick. And the little one, he doesn't have any immune issues, but he always just does seem to, you know, if they both catch a cold, it seems to hit him a little bit harder and it seems to take longer for him to get over it. And so that does have me a little bit worried as well. So basically I'm just super anxious about school. Um, but we do have a few more weeks of summer vacation. Um, I know the kids want to go to the zoo again. A different zoo maybe um and i signed him up for a couple of things at the nature center um and hopefully we can finish out the summer um at least the cicadas are gone and get them back in school and then i will finally for the first time in eight and a half years uh, be able to work something like full time you know it's not going to be full full time you know, I'm still gonna be doing the school run in the morning and and the school pickup and helping with the homework and all of those things um, but I should end up with a chunk of time to myself from 9 30 until three o'clock every day my husband's still at home though when will he go back to work He's supposed to go back um, Earlier in the summer and they changed it, they said September 1st, and then just got an email last week that said, no, we're postponing it indefinitely. <sighs> I don't know, I just want some time to myself. Um, so, although, you know, I can still work when he's at home, <laughs> um, but we'll see. I don't know how long that, that's going to last. Like I said, 
how long the kids are actually going to stay in school, but maybe things will be somewhat normal in the fall and I'll actually be able to work or at least not be on full-time kid duty. So that is uh, kind of what's rattling around in my head these days, uh, worrying about that. Um, other than that, just a quick reminder that the sweater long is still going on. I just started on August 9th. It runs all the way through October 15th. You just pick one of the eligible sweater patterns. There are 27 of them and join in and I will include a link to that in the description box down below. Thank you so much for joining me for episode 45 of the ELO and Stitch podcast. Links to everything that I have talked about can be found in the show notes at mediaperuana.com slash ELO and Stitch. And since I am not on vacation, I will actually do them for this episode. Um, thank you so much to my Patreon patrons for their support to help keep the Media Perduana Knits channel up and running. So if you are interested in supporting the channel and getting some perks and freebies and sneak peeks and things, you can find more information at patreon.com slash media peruana. Here on YouTube, it would really help me out if you would click that subscribe button, give this video a thumbs up, leave a comment, share the video with your friends, all of those things that help expand the reach, not just of this episode, but of the channel as a whole, where I have podcast, the Finish Fix Frog vlogs, lots of free knitting tutorials. Uh, if you are looking for me on social media, you can find me on Ravelry and Instagram as Media Peruana, and I will see you next time. Thank you.